my channel. It's so good to see you back in my channel in the new year. New year, new plan. For those of you who are planning to do a family home renovation in 2022, you have come to the right place. Today, I'll be sharing with you 20 precious tips to get you started with your home renovation. In my very first video, I've said that we've taken our home back to brick and did a top to bottom full refurbishment before we moved in. To be even more specific, we didn't hire any entire designer or project manager. Instead, we worked directly with our builder and sourced all the materials by ourselves. So these 20 tips are all from my own reflection after the renovation. I promise you will find them helpful. I divided these tips into three categories. First category are some takeaways from full refurbishment. Second are some post-pandemic trends that I see in recent home renovation projects. Third category is very important where I talk about how to manage a relationship. This includes managing the relationship with your partner, builder and suppliers. First tip is know what you can and cannot do with your property. Certain works can be done without any planning permission. For example, a simple loft conversion or just changing the interior layout. However, if you are planning to do a large ground floor extension, enlarging your window sizes or increase the loft ridge line, you will probably need to seek for planning permission before any works to be done. For this, I would suggest you to talk to your architect as early as possible to avoid surprises. One good way to save money is to take advantage of those free on-site consultations that some architects do before you decide to work with them. I had three to four meetings like that, which significantly helped me climb up the steep learning curve at the beginning of my renovation. Make sure you know roughly what major works you will be doing before each meeting to get the most of it. Second, configure your home for potential family growth. We bought our place wanting to get married and grow the family. Therefore, I designed everything allowing certain changes in the future. For example, we want to have kids, so a room with generous footprint as a nursery would be a must. In addition to that, with the family growing, we would be needing things such as bigger kitchen, bigger fridge, and separate functions for washing machine and dryers for higher efficiency. All of these have to be planned in advance when you do the renovation. Otherwise, you will just be spending time and money again and again in the future to improve the setup. Third, gather ideas and document the inspirations. When I started, I didn't find searching for ideas difficult, but I did find documenting the ideas and keeping track of what I found quite challenging because nowadays information is just everywhere. So here's what I did. For apps such as Instagram, Pinterest, and House, I just saved down the photos by creating an album within the app. For random Google searches, I would take a screenshot of what I found and save that picture into my photo album, then add those pictures into a newly created album on my iPhone. In that way, those pictures will never be lost in your thousand pictures on your iPhone. Fourth tip is involve your neighbors. No matter you are renovating a house or a flat, it's always a good idea to inform your neighbors about your planned work as early as possible, especially when you need planning permission which requires consultation from your adjacent neighbors. Take us as an example, our property is a terraced house, so before we even exchange the contract, we knock down our neighbor's door to introduce ourselves and say hi, also to get a sense of how conservative they are about the works that we plan to do. You should be aware that your property value will be heavily impacted by the outcome of your planning permission. Therefore, getting your neighbor on board early does more benefit than harm. Fifth tip is invest in hidden works. This is an area a lot of people make mistakes, especially newbies. Renovation is more about hidden works than cosmetic touch-ups. Things such as damage issue, plumbing and wiring can cost you thousands of pounds to fix if you don't get it right at the very beginning. So make sure you invest in these areas before allocating your funds to finishing materials such as hardware, paint and furniture. To give you an example, underfloor heating is expensive, but it is the most economical way to do it during the renovation rather than after. If you do it later, you will have to lift up your entire floor and potentially upgrade your boiler system and plumbing work to support the underfloor heating. Six, work out a budget by yourself. 
Having a good budget is crucial to the success of your project. Let's all be realistic. People who are watching this video probably don't own a fortune to renovate our family homes. We are all constrained by money. Certain things we can afford, but at the price of letting go of others. Dilemmas are everywhere during renovation. You'll be tired hearing sales representatives telling you you'll get a better finishing if you add X amount more. Yes, I have to say it is that 15 to 20% that makes your home a showroom. However, you have to ask yourself, do you want a showroom or a practical home? Also, how to do the budget. When I did our budget, I worked backwards. What does that mean? I used to work in finance, so I know the importance of exit strategy. We considered the possible exit value of our property, then subtracted the purchasing price we paid for the property. The rough difference became our renovation budget. Starting from this figure, list out all the works you want to do and then allocate the available funds to see if you can cover them up. If not, it's either you cut off work or you know in advance that your property will probably be undervalued at the time you want to sell it in the future. 7. Due diligence your builders before you appoint any. I can't emphasize more on this point because you will be 100% reliant on your builders. Here are some tips to avoid making mistakes on builders. First, never hire a builder from the street. Always get recommendations through word of mouth. Second, no matter who recommended you the builder, you should visit two to three projects that they have done in the past to get a feel of whether that is something in line with what you want to achieve. Third, if possible, talk to their previous client. First-hand feedback is always more reliable. 8. Get along with your builders. If you are like us, doing a back to brick renovation, you will be spending tremendous amount of time with your builders. Talking over the phone, chatting through WhatsApp, or discussing problems on site. You have to make sure you get along with each other and at least like each other's work style. Otherwise, you will be struggling to get through till the end. 9. Think through the kitchen layout early on. Kitchen has probably the most plumbing and wiring work in our renovation. We had to think about the kitchen layout very early on so our builders can plan things such as drainage and extraction. It can be quite overwhelming to think of a kitchen design at the very beginning of your renovation, but here are some tricks that can get you started. Start with your current kitchen, which bits you like and what needs to be improved. For example, in our previous flat, we had a very small sink. It is about 40 cm wide. That gave me a lot of headache. Each time after I use a pot or pan, I had to wash it right away, otherwise the sink will be full. In addition to that, I didn't have any drawers in our previous kitchen, which made storage of cutleries and plates very very painful. So in your new kitchen design, at least you should make sure these design bugs are corrected. 10. Respect while be flexible with payment schedule. Make sure you are in line with your builders on payment. For example, do you do the payment all up front, which I never recommend, or do you settle the payment every week, which can be quite frequent and tedious for some builder, or you do milestone payment, such as paying 10% at the very beginning and then another 20% when foundation is done. Anything can work as long as both you and your builder feel comfortable. Payment schedule can also be used as quality control so you can have some leverage when things don't go as expected. However, remember it works both ways. If more work gets done in a certain period, builder deserves to be paid earlier than originally planned. 11. Building cost has increased. Due to the increased demand in home improvement, disrupted logistics during pandemic, and also lack of labor from continental Europe, building cost has gone up quite a lot. So if you obtained your quote back in 2021, make sure you consult that builder again before you give him the contract, because the quote might not be valid anymore. 12. Plan ahead and buffer more time for delays. We did our renovation during the pandemic from late 2020 to mid-2021. We have experienced certain level of delays from various suppliers. For example, I remember I had to wait for two months to receive our bath, which was supposed to be only a two-week delivery window. We also heard from our neighbors who were installing new glazing to their property complained about the longer lead time that they had to wait to receive the windows. 
Due to these situations, my suggestion would be work closely with your builders and get your suppliers lined up as soon as possible. For example, once the structure has been put up, you can already have your glazing suppliers to come on site and survey the window. 13. Embrace the kitchen and diner concept Home entertaining has become more and more popular these days, especially post-pandemic. People feel safer and more relaxed at home. So if you're doing an extension, consider the open kitchen plan with a dining area just next to it. If you're renovating a flat, consider breaking the wall between the kitchen and the living area. This was something I learned from our previous flat. Our kitchen was used to be boxed away from the dining area. Every time we have friends over, we were just stuck in the kitchen preparing for food and never had the chance to talk with our friends at the same time. It was so awkward that we just left our guests on their own. Instead of being hosts, we were just two cooks who prepare food for them. 14. Home office setup Since March 2020, the majority of the population start working from home in this country. However, how many of us have already got proper home office set up pre-pandemic? I guess not many. So to make your life easier and to make your property more valuable in the future, I think it's important to set up home office properly. Take us as an example, we built an outbuilding in our garden for my husband as his home office. This garden building does not need any planning permission and is relatively cheap to build compared to building an extension to the main house. However, if you don't have the space for a proper room, you can always come out of a corner and use that as an office. For example, I made myself a home office by coming out the corner on our first floor. It is not a proper room, however, for an office, I think it's more than enough. Or it doesn't even have to be a room. The alcove area next to the chimney breast can also be a good solution for home office setup. 15. Home gym setup Similar to home office, you probably want a room or at least a space for some quick home workout. For us, because we still haven't got our coffee table yet, for now, we just use the space in between of the TV and our sofa in the living room for gym purposes. 16. Consider smart home setup if you're spending increasing amount of time at home, you want everything to be easy and accessible at your fingertip. For example, our house is entirely powered by Google. Heating, skylight control, front doorbell, rear garden camera, and so on. I don't need to shout to call my husband if we're not in the same area. For example, when I'm in the main house and he's in his office, I can just send a broadcast message through Google speaker and he will receive the message from another Google speaker in his office. Hey Google, broadcast a message. What's the message? Dinner is ready, can you come over please? Alright, okay, I'll be now. Dinner is ready, can you come over please? 17. Make sure you both are committed. If neither of you want to take the responsibility of a renovation project, my suggestion would be just don't do it or pay someone else to do it for you. It requires a lot of energy and commitment to go through a renovation project, so you have to be 120% committed. 18. Pass allocation and teamwork. This was a mistake that I made at the very beginning of the project because I know I always wanted to design our family home and I was so passionate about the entire project. So basically, I took off everything from my husband's shoulder and thought I can do them all by myself. However, I was completely wrong. Even though I really enjoyed doing it and didn't mind at all taking on everything, for a healthier husband and wife relationship, I had to onboard him to a certain level. In the end of the day, it's a teamwork. And as a husband, he needs to contribute his idea to our family home as well. So I think it's good to have one person leading the project, but a certain level of task allocation is absolutely necessary to keep the project going. 19. Always reconcile with your partner first. Do not argue with your partners in front of your builders or your suppliers. Always reconcile between you two before telling others what to do. Throughout the renovation process, it's very easy to have different opinions with each other because we are all human beings and we are all different. Managing a renovation project is the same as managing a work project with colleagues. You are a team and you want to make everyone on the team feel happy. Therefore, respect each other's opinion and try to find intermediate solutions is always a good way to keep the morale high. In return, you will be surprised how much your builder respects you and that will make your life so much easier. 
The last tip, number 20, be very specific about what you want with your builder. In my very first video, I mentioned about a 50-page PowerPoint document we drafted before the work started. There's a link here. Go and have a look if you're interested what did we include in that document. The idea here is you don't want to miss things and open up the opportunity to be charged for additional work. A good example would be kitchen installation cost. Do you want your kitchen supplier to do the installation for you? This would obviously cost more. Or do you want your builder to do it for you? Both options have pros and cons. All of these require thorough think through before the work starts. All right, I hope the above 20 tips inspired you in your home renovation project. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to give me a thumb up. In my channel, I talk about house renovation, home decoration, and some tips and tricks that can help you organize your beautiful home better. If you don't want to miss out, please click on the subscription button below and turn on that notification bell to stay connected. Okay, I upload video every Friday at 7 p.m. So I will see you next Friday, 7 p.m. back in my channel. Bye-bye, guys.